Oh, snap. What's that you got on? Yo, these are new r ones by Randy. I'm in the future with this. I'm stepping on top of the world. These are the new R. Ones by Rampage. Order right now. Land to land, C to C, state to state. These are official. Don't wait. The R. Ones by Rampage. Rated R Empire. Yeah. Hey, get your pair right now by going into the description box and clicking the link at the top line of the description box. Tell them your boy Old God and Sandman from the Hip Hop Essential Podcast. Yep. I want to talk about Boosie, man. Um, he was on uh, Vlad TV, and he was talking about Jay-Z. I don't have the audio clipped up, but I remember what he said. He pretty much was saying that Jay-Z is irrelevant, irrelevant in this day and age in music. When I was looking at it, I was just like, man, it's like hate spewing from this dude. Does this have something to do with 2017? Well, I think Jay-Z said something to him about the money on your ear type whatever thing like that. And he was pissed off. Damn, I don't know man, if you remember all that. That's when we first got seen. He was getting started around that time. Crazy. But uh, yeah, he pretty much was just saying like, you know, Jay-Z is irrelevant. You got people saying that Nas, 21 Savage said Nas was irrelevant. Then they turn around and do a song together. But um, do you think Jay-Z is irrelevant in this day and age? And the, and the point he was trying to make was like, you don't really hear him on the radio like that. What's your, what's your thought? Um, hell no, I don't think that that's true. He's definitely I hear relevant. Him on the radio. Yeah, he's relevant as a motherfucker. And this is why when he puts out a verse, it's the only thing talked about when an album is released. Yeah. When Khaled dropped his album, what was it? Was it called God Did the whole album? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You don't even remember, but you remember Jay Z's <laughs> verse, right? Exactly my point. He definitely still matters, but I will say this: Bootsy is not the only person down south to say this about Jay Z. That's true. Down South, they got a whole different respect and whole different tier when it comes to hip-hop. And they don't hold people up here in the same regard as they do down there. And that's their prerogative. I'm not mad at that. I think he said the same thing similar to Nas as well. And I'm not mad at what Bootsy said about that. I don't agree with him. But I'm not mad at it because I've heard, we've heard uh, Big Gip say something similar to that. We've heard uh, Project Pat. Project Pat. I think Ali said something similar to that. Nobody <laughs> ever hated on him. But it's something that's a consensus. You talking about St. Louis. Georgia and Tennessee and yeah. people down south just kind of feel this way so I guess that's just how they feel I don't agree like I said I feel like he does and maybe that's just my east coast bias but um he got a right to his opinion yeah and then like you know what he also said was that like when you think about Jay-Z you think about more so business moves like him 200 million dollar title business deals he's suing he's trying to buy a Bacardi for 1.5 billion and stuff like that but I disagree I think that He's one of the artists that were able to stay relevant besides, you know, despite the music, mm -hmm. you know. And like you said, when his verses drop and, you know, when his album stuff drop, people want to hear him. And you may not hear him on, like, some of those radio stations that Boosie's talking about. I get it. But you put on the right radio stations, you're going to hear some Jay-Z songs coming through every now and then. Mm -hmm. Whether it be, I just want to love you. One of them drinks is going to play through on there. But, um, again, like you said... You put it perfectly. That South thing. Yep. They ain't really rocking with Jay like that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. They ain't that it's not rocking with them. We put Jay Z up like, you know, but then the same things for us down there. You tell us somebody about this person or that person, like who? Like we ain't right. really rock with three six mafia like that coming up. I know I didn't. I didn't really rock with the cash money movement like that. I seen them and all that. It took me a while to, to really appreciate you know, that, um, I wasn't really listening to Project Pat, mm -hmm. not like that, Pastor Troy's and shit like that, nah, we was listening to Jay-Z, Jadakiss, Nas, mm -hmm. it's just different, you know, geographical areas, you know, depending on what you listen to, then you have some of those people who do, that be from the North to listen to the South, yep. you got some people in the South, that's from the South, and listen to the North, so, it just is what it is, man, I think it was a little bit of hate in Boosie's blood, you know, with that, but hey, it is what it is. I'm gonna take your word for it, I gotta hear it. You know what I mean? We're, we're sitting here kind of talking about what he said as opposed to how he said it. You know what I mean? I would love to hear how he said it. And you brought ah, it up. Yeah, point. we got to play that joint. He, I, I'm surprised I didn't hear it because I've seen the clip, but I just didn't listen to it. Yeah. That money phone situation, he was pissed off about that. You got to watch him say it, man. You got to watch him because you can kind of see it. Like, yeah, it's a little bit of, you know what I mean? Like this stuff. Like he's getting his point across. Like he ain't playing down here like that. I'll be in the clubs in Atlanta, boom, 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 boom. But nevertheless, you know it is what it is. I'm sure a lot of people have certain resentments toward him as well. And I'm not saying nobody's hating on him. 
we don't know what type of we've heard a lot of good things about jay-z we've heard a lot of not so good things about jay-z and his personal relationships and i think it's somewhere in between on both and that goes for anybody so yeah. some people you're gonna fucking vibe with certain people you ain't you get 10 people in a room eight people may say something good and it's the two people that say something bad is the shit that hits headlines so who knows you know what i'm saying that money phone shit makes a good point and i don't know if you ever got over that or if anything else happened prior to that or you just don't fuck with the dude who knows i don't agree with him when it comes to the business either because I, st- I I know him more for the music and now as we're adults and we get to see the moves he's making in business and he's still freshly new yeah. and business is crazy and money as he's made doing it in the last 10 years he's way more seasoned in music than he is in business as he's still grown in business so I don't agree with that either but different viewpoint different location yeah, yeah I was trying to see if I had it in here but I don't have a video you know saved in here so I guess you can watch it later on but yeah. uh yeah, man. I, oh, I want something. Else. What the hell else did I want to talk about on here? Can't even find it right now. Damn. 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 That is what it is. What do you think, real quick before we get out of yeah. here? I was talking about it a couple of days ago. Um, we seen what happened with Sweetie um, and, and Vlad. And oh. we had that conversation behind the scenes about maybe what some of the publicists are saying. In regards to that, do you think it's a being in this game now for a couple of years we've been in it, a payola system, kind of similar to the music industry, like we've seen with Atlantic Records, they're buying views and stuff like that. And I'm not going on the level of people buying views, I'm sure it's happening, but I'm not talking about that. Just more so, this becoming more of a money game in the podcasting when it comes to certain talents you may get and people wanting to come on your platform and things like that. Do you think a payola system's kind of, kind of going into place? Is that the right word to use or what do you feel about that? Uh, I think that uh, yeah, that could be accurate. Um, it could be ac- that could be definitely be accurate as far as I think it's more so when you talk about that is more so like a, a, a popularity contest, and obviously people are going to move for money. Right. If you offer somebody ten, fifteen thousand for an interview, you could be you know have a hole in the wall and probably have five subscribers and they probably coming through right. and it's business i get it i'm not you know knocking nobody for that but if you got prestige and you and you're a big platform you offer people money most likely they're going to come through you know and do the interview but um you know of course people are paying to put themselves i think in position a lot of it's organic i'm not going to say that it's not but a lot of it the people are paying to put themselves to fluff themselves up because if you're going to call yourself you know, one of the, cause at one point, remember, everybody was going through this whole thing where, you know, they was like, the podcast was flipping every week. It was Drink Champs. It was Gilly and boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. You know, Joe Button. You don't really see that as much as you used to. You know what I mean? But um, if you got the major backing behind you, if you got liquor companies behind you, you're going to stay relevant. You're going to get the guest on there. You're going to stay in the top two or three slots. That just is what it is. You know what I mean? Now, as far as the guests and stuff coming on the show and the payola system, yeah, people, I think it's been, you know, it's always been like that. And music, yep. you know, and anything, everybody, people are controlled by money at the end of the day. So, you know, um, you got to just, if you're going to, if you're like an independent company like us, you just kind of got to go through the ups and downs and grind your way through it until you're able to get to the point. Because for me, it's always been in businesses to funding. Yeah. Like, look at, look at like Facebook. Look at like um, even uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't really pop pop until they got the fundings, you know what I mean, from Google or whatever, or, you know, this company came in and purchased them and then they popped off. Right. You know, there's very few companies that, you know, they only get to a certain point, but when now when the funding comes in, now it's like, okay, we can get our shit on the blogs every day. Now, you know what I'm saying, we can, you know, get everything out there like we need. We can get the right stab. We can get the right, you know, production, you know, the right sound. And we, maybe we could pay to push our shit to the top of the whatevers. Whatever's out there, you know, it could be done, whether it be Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Mm-hmm. Once you got the money, you got the budget, then once you become a staple, you know, and people, you, you put this product out where people expect, you know, you to... Like, for example, like a drink champ, you expect, you know, a certain guest every week. and You expect it to be hard hitting. Right. Certain. And once you get that, it's easy. You know what I mean? You, once the blog's picking you up every day, it's easy. Mm-hmm. You know, whether people's paying for that, I'm sure a lot of people are. But then again, it comes clockwork. Okay. You know, Oshanti said this on a breakfast club. We got, you know what I mean? Boop, 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 boop. Breakfast club, drink champs, man, I was worth a game. You know, Vlad, all these people 
at a point in time, did the academics. Ain't they say anything? Oh, I took a shit in the bathroom. It's gonna be on a blog mm-hmm. because they, you know, people like, you know, listening to them. People click those, you know, names or whatever, you know, on the algorithm. So, um, yeah, that, that's how I feel about the whole situation, honestly. Yeah, and that's a great teaching point for anybody getting into this game. Anybody got their foot one foot in this game, and you trying to, you know, I mean, go through your hurdles, and you're dealing with the things people. You know what I mean? Bailing on you in interviews and people doing various things. We've been through it all. You know what I'm saying? Been through it all. Yeah. And this game, yeah, although it may be grimy and it may be the person with the bigger budget wins, but at the end of the day, if you're real about this shit, if you're true about this shit, if you really want to do this shit for real and you ain't just in it for the popularity or in it for a couple of views or thinking this shit's easy, there's still some great financial benefits that you can gain from this and freedoms that you can gain from this without having to sell your soul and not having to sell your house you know what i'm saying in order to get an interview or two you know what i'm saying so it it definitely it takes a grind you know what i mean you're gonna have to grind you're gonna have to work you're gonna have to sacrifice you're gonna have to suffer on more than one occasion in order to get what you want out of this shit even though there's power players in places and gatekeepers seemingly starting to form like the music industry once did in a podcast game yeah don't use that as an excuse to do what you gotta do i think people are looking for we seen a lot of people that came into the podcast sure game. Did. Sure they're kind of looking for that one interview mm-hmm. or that one thing that's going to propel you. That may not ever happen. Kind of like that one hit. Right. Yeah. 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 You know it's I mean? like and that may not ever happen. It may your success just may be over a long period of time of grinding, the ups and downs, having some successes, having some failures. And you go back and look, you're like, oh shit, look at our resume. Mm-hmm. Like we done did well this, this, and this, and this, and this. Not that it's you know about the past, but. You know, you build it for a reason. Like, we got an impressive catalog, but are we looking back at it? Not really. We always looking forward and trying to continue to build the catalog till we could get to a point. Like, A.J. Brown was saying this. Like, you know, you you trying to get to the point where, you know, it's life-changing for your family. Yeah, Once bro. it gets life-changing to your family and different bloodlines and stuff, then that's when it's like, okay, now that mark was made. Until you get there... It's a grind. Let's put the shovel, I mean, in the ground and keep grinding, man. Got you know that what blue mean? motherfucking tarp, put them leaves on it and keep moving. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to. But yeah, man, just wanted to talk about that too, real quick. For the people listening to the podcast, man, we appreciate y'all. We ain't giving y'all, I haven't given y'all thanks in a, in a little bit, man. So thank y'all yeah. for the people that's tapping in and listening to the podcast and still tapping in and enjoying. Share it. You know what I mean? Let people know we out here. We're doing the damn thing. We're doing it the right way and the hottest way out here. Raw, real, and uncensored. You already know. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate everybody listening again. Like he said, that's your brother, Sam, man, Viral Hip Hop News. I'm your brother, Oh God, Hip Hop News, Uncensored. Together, we had a Hip Hop Uncensored podcast over and out.